Jeffrey Power is here, NAB. We're here with Bryce Telestream and, of course, Wirecast. New Wirecast 9 coming out very soon. We got a first look at the beta, some cool news. We're going to talk about that next. So, Bryce, I'm going to get this out of the way because I know there's a lot of people that have been asking this question on the forums, and that is Wirecast 9 is coming out. Uh, but, you know, they just got done paying for Wirecast 8. How much is Wirecast 9 going to cost? You, you, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Oh, absolutely. So we changed our business model, right? And it was for the benefit of our customers. We wanted to make it cheaper for them, right? So with our new business model, uh, you buy it once, right? And once you get on 8, you still have to pay that upgrade to get to 8, right? Yeah. Um, from that point on, it's just you get, with that initial purchase, you get a year of upgrades and then from that point on, you use the last version that was available when your updates expired indefinitely. So you still own it like you always have. Okay. But if you want to keep getting new features as they roll out, it's just a hundred bucks a year for to stay on the update train, That's right? Awesome. So with that train, as long as you to, stay on the update train. Yeah. So right now there isn't any penalty because it's just became that business model, right? Okay. So you couldn't have lapsed for even yet. You yeah. Can't three years of no of no payment or no uh, you know, yeah, upgrade you have to you know, package. That Eventually there'll be some Make kind of upgrade, payments. right? Simple as that. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you know how that works out is in a three year period you spend three hundred in upgrades instead of a thousand, right? Yeah. So definitely better for the customer. Awesome. Now, I was downstairs at your big booth and I was talking to Scott uh, Murray. Murray, he's the new VP yeah. of, of Telestream or of, uh, of product management. Of product management. Yeah. Okay. And we had an awesome conversation in the direction of uh, Wirecast. Uh, he comes from the traditional uh, traditional production, s- production uh, yeah, working with raw for raw switchers, Grass Valley switchers, yeah. you know, traditional switch environments, right? Yeah. So, and he really wants to integrate the two. I, I, from what we talked about, it sounded like he's under, he understands where we need to go in the future. And, and I'm very excited about that. And the beta in Wirecast 9, all of the new features in there. And of course, we've got the NDI stuff, which we'll talk about in a second. But your big news here for Wirecast 9 is the X keys, right? Yeah, so that's one of three things we're announcing here, right? Okay. So we have the X keys control surface, right? And so it's not a generic control surface. It actually has custom keys designed specifically for Wirecast interface. Mm-hmm. We also have PTZ control, right? So PTZ control was really a uh, you know step towards solving uh, a common problem that we get this phrase to us a lot, right? And that's typically house of worship. Um, or uh, education or any time where it's difficult to pay a bunch of camera operators or get volunteers or what have you, right? Um, So with the PTZ automatic control, uh, you can essentially put, you know, one, two, four, six cameras, you know, however many you want. Um, around and set up presets. Yeah. And so what you can either manually control it like a traditional PTZ workflow, or you can set up all your presets. Okay. So what's the third thing you got? So the third thing is restreaming and captioning, and I, I lumped that in because both of them go through with the cloud, right? Yeah. And this is this is this is super exciting, especially if you've got like me, I've only got a five megabit upload bandwidth yeah. at home. So tell us about this. So I'll cover restreaming first, right? So with restreaming, you're essentially able to uh, send a stream to multiple destinations, you know, two, four, six, eight, what have you, uh, with one stream leaving your computer. Now that's important for the bandwidth uh, scenario you mentioned, um, as well as CPU resources and machine resources, what have you, right? So um, doing four streams from one computer requires a fairly beefy machine. Yeah. You either got to kind of do a complex, I want to send this to, uh, you know, hardware accelerated encoding with my GPU from NVIDIA or QuickSync on my uh, CPU, um, or, you know, you just have to have a really beefy machine and exactly. do a bunch of X264 outs. Exactly. So with this, you just you set up all your outputs the same way you've always set them up. Nothing's changed there. The only difference is, is that once you've signed up for our, our Telestream uh, cloud service, right, um, you just check one box per output that you want to be restreamed, and a little cloud icon shows up next to that output. Okay. So you just go through your six outputs, what have you, and check one box. I want this one to be restreamed. I want this one to be restreamed, and this one to be restreamed. And that's it. We do all the heavy lifting from there, right? Restreaming is not new. Yeah. Right. But historically. You got to go to a third-party website, configure yeah. all your outputs there. Yeah. Uh, you got to get your RTMP fee or key, and then you got to go back into your streaming solution, paste it in, yeah. and all that. Right? This takes all of the extra work out. You don't have to manage two different places. It's all in one spot. Awesome. Right? And yeah. so that leads into captioning. Right? So captioning is yeah. Becoming- this is another exciting. Yeah. Thing. I don't do too much captioning, but some of you out there have been asking about how captioning works. So. Mm-hmm. 
Tell us, uh, th I'm, I'm just blown away by this, so go ahead. Yeah, so the lay of the land with captioning, right, is if you're uh, education-based or government-based, you know, not high, doesn't have to be, you know, big-time government stuff, your local city hall, you know, they're still bound by Section 508 government rules, yep. right? So if you are streaming and you're in one of those, you know, those categories, or maybe you are including some content in your stream that has been previously aired on TV with captions, you're required to have captions on it, right? So. The way to do that historically has been contact some company that'll give you a box that you have to feed and it streams out and they have a stenographer remote in and you got to coordinate all that and schedule it. Yeah. Or uh, maybe you're just streaming to YouTube, YouTube only. They have provisions to do a you know stenographer remote in if you're their cloud kind of stuff. Okay. Um, but that only works in that one location, right? Um, so what we've done is we actually have allowed you, so if you're doing your restreaming service, you don't even have to disperse it to multiple locations, it could be just the one. You send it up to our cloud, you got one checkbox. You just check that one box and you have speech to text captions on there. Awesome. And the accuracy rate's pretty high, right? And now it's gonna vary depending on what you're sending it. Right now, um, it's just taking the audio from your stream output, right? So if you have a bunch of background music, you know, it's, it makes it a little harder to it's pick it out. Idea, yeah. uh, but if it's just one person talking, it's very accurate, like yeah. 93, you know, sometimes higher uh, yeah. percentage rate. It's all really cool stuff. And I'm excited for you guys. I'm glad to be a Wirecast Pro user. And uh, just all the cool stuff, the NDI stuff, the, the PTZ uh, stuff. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't really t touch about the NDI stuff. Now with, with Skype coming in, with NDI, with uh, the new cameras from uh, Panasonic, from PTZ Optics, from uh, uh, NDI yep. uh, uh, camera, the the Sparks, the new 4K yep. Spark. Uh, you guys, what's what's your 4K roadmap? So right now, I mean, 4K has never been disabled in Wirecast, right? It's always yeah. been something you can do. You just have right? to set it up. So we don't currently have a stance on officially supporting it because you have to have such an extreme system with all the variables locked down to a T to get it to work great and have it be seamless, right? And you know, when you're trying to convey that to a customer, it's like, okay, um, it ends up being, you know, they introduce this variable, they introduce this, and they're dropping frames, and you know, it, it's difficult, yeah. right? Yeah. So I mean, now they got the i9 processors from Intel that have come out, and you know, the X299 platform solved some uh, kind of kind of ghosty hiding latency issues that would appear in the yeah. X99 platform where yeah. you get random latency spikes because you know the, a, a big um, hindrance there is actually the latency over the PCIe bus yeah getting those 4k frames there fast enough yeah. right and so heck, heck, um, even 1080p 60 frames a second yeah. is, is tough to do you got to think about you know 30 frames a second you got to deliver a new frame every 33.3 milliseconds and for 60 it's like 18.6 milliseconds yeah. I think it is yeah. yeah and so that's really fast and then now you're you're quadrupling the pixel, pixels with 4K, yeah. right? By doubling the resolution. And you got to deliver all that extra data at the same exact same, timings, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's a lot of data to go over that. So exactly. uh, now with you know the new hardware that's coming out, the Xi9s and the, the X299 stuff, I mean, we're starting to get to where um, you know those systems are a little bit more commonplace and easier to see, right? You know, we've been able to do 4K for a long time. We just don't advertise it because it's just it's not quite ready for yeah. your average consumer. You know? Okay. All right. Well, we could go on forever. It's 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 an awesome product and lots of great changes. Is, was there anything that that you haven't talked about in the upgrade for nine yet or no? Uh, I, don't, I think we pretty much covered all okay. of that. We have a lot more things in the pipeline for nine yeah. and for ten and, and you know. Um, oh, and and that's the other thing that Scott was talking about was this upgrade is actually tw there. He wants to plan for a twice a year upgrade type situation. Yeah, so with the new business model, the version numbers being like, this version number has this feature, and this version number has this new feature, and a, you know the paid upgrade thing, it kind of, the numbers mean a little bit less, right? Yeah. So we can do it more often, right? So, uh, you know, we got V9 coming May 1, uh, V10 might be in a few more months with a couple more new features, yeah. right? So we can do it more often, right? The new business model allows us to be faster, more efficient, and I th I give, think you deliver should, more. I think you should change the naming structure. Uh, structure instead of going uh, V9 to V10, you should call it uh, Wirecast Jeffrey Powers or Wirecast Geekazine. How's that? <laughs> I'll uh, I'll float that idea with the team and see I, how I it goes. I think that's going to work, right? So, all right. Uh, all that said, 
Uh, wire casting, can you wire cast uh, the, the main prices haven't changed at all? There was a difference when we went to eight. Studio is now 700. Okay. Uh, and and Pro is 1,000, right? Oh. You know, even in Studio and Pro, we're including new blue titling engine, which is like $150 software yeah. for free with every version of software sold Wirecast, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, that's, that's a huge value. You get all these advanced titles, social integrations. You can bring in, uh, you know, your comments from Facebook and what have you all in there. So I mean there's a lot of value that you know, people don't even really use even sometimes in studio or pro. Tell stream.net to find out all the information from there. Bryce, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So, there you go. If you want to do some live studio production, Wirecast is, is, is a way to go, definitely. If you have any questions on it, let me know. You can join my group over on Facebook, the Wirecast, Wirecast Pros. You don't have to be a pro to be a part of it. So just go over there. And of course, go over to geekazine.com, youtube.com forward slash geekazine. Go ahead, link, uh, like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification for the next video. And then we'll see you. we got a lot more video at NAB 2018 coming soon. So check it all out. And until then, you guys, geek out.